we're going to prove that the limit of the natural log of x as x goes to infinity is positive infinity. You can see a graph here of the natural log of x and it does appear to be getting bigger and bigger, but it does so very slowly. So it will take a little bit of math to show that this limit statement is true. However, it's not too difficult. Let me tell you all about the stuff we've got on screen now. First, I want to make sure we understand the definition of the limit equaling infinity as x goes to infinity. We're going to have to prove this. For some fixed positive number m, we're going to need to show that there exists some big N so that if x is greater than big N, our function is greater than big M. And our function, of course, in this case, is natural log of x. So in short, what this means is we need to show that eventually the natural log of x will surpass any number big M. The idea behind this definition basically is that you could give me any really big number, like a billion, and I could guarantee that as long as x is greater than this other really big number, the natural log of x will be greater than a billion. So give me any number, I can assure you that the natural log will eventually surpass that number. That's what we have to prove to establish this limit statement. And for the proof, it will actually be useful to have this fact that the natural log of 2 is at least 1 half. So we'll have to begin by proving this. And to prove it, we're going to need the mean value theorem for definite integrals. Since our proof is going to end with natural log of x being greater than m, it should make sense that we're going to need some natural log inequality we're sure of in order to establish this one. And the natural log inequality we're going to use is ln of 2 is at least a half. So how are we going to prove that using the mean value theorem for definite integrals? Well, a reasonable place to start would be to connect the natural log of 2 to a definite integral. To that end, I could say certainly the natural log of 2 is equal to the integral of 1 over x, because the integral of 1 over x is natural log of x, from 1 to 2, because then the natural log of 2 will just be natural log of 2, and then subtract the natural log of 1, that's minus 0. So hopefully you can see why this equation is true. I've connected the natural log of 2 to an integral, and now I can use the mean value theorem to establish something else that's going to be helpful. I'll write our application of the mean value theorem in purple. Here's what it tells us. It tells us that there exists some number c in the closed interval from 1 to 2. 1 and 2 are the bounds of our integral. That's where those are coming from. So there exists some c in this closed interval so that our function evaluated at c, and remember our function is 1 over x, so our function evaluated at c is 1 over c. There's got to exist this c so that 1 over c is equal to our integral multiplied by 1 divided by the width of the interval that the integral is over. So again, since we're applying it to this integral, 1 over b minus a, that's 1 over the lower bound minus the upper bound, so 2 minus 1, and then just multiply this by our integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over x dx. By the mean value theorem for definite integrals, there must exist this number c satisfying this equation. Now we can do some simplification. We have that 1 over c is equal to 1 over 2 minus 1 is just 1, so we don't have to write that. And then the integral of 1 over x from 1 to 2, we already said that's the natural log of 2. So there must exist some number c in the closed interval from 1 to 2, so that 1 over c equals the natural log of 2. Now we're very close to being able to establish that the natural log of 2 is at least 1 half. We do it just like this. Since c is in the closed interval from 1 to 2, we know that 1 must be less than or equal to c, which is less than or equal to 2. Now I know something about 1 over c, so I want to get 1 over c in this inequality. To do that, we'll just invert the whole inequality, which means we're inverting each number, 
and then flipping the direction. So one will just become one less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to C becomes one over C less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to and two becomes one over two. And you can see where this is going. One over C is equal to the natural log of two. So I can replace one over C with natural log of two. And this is the inequality that we get. One is at least natural log of two, which is at least a half. Now we can proceed with the rest of the proof and we're already almost done. To finish the proof, we need to remember that natural log of x is increasing. That's because its derivative, 1 over x, is positive on the whole domain of natural log of x. The domain of natural log of x, remember, are the positive real numbers. So natural log of x is increasing, and that means that if x is greater than some number, let's just say our big number m for the time being, if x is greater than m, then we know for sure that the natural log of x has to be greater than the natural log of m. Again, that's because natural log is increasing. So if x comes after big M, natural log of x has to be bigger than natural log of m. Unfortunately, this doesn't really help us because remember, we need to show that the natural log of x is greater than m, not greater than natural log of m, and there's not really any simplification we can do to that, so having x be greater than big M doesn't really help us. However, if we take x to be greater than 2 to the power of 2m, now this is going to work out great. By the same logic as before, since natural log is increasing, if we take x to be greater than 2 to the power of 2m, natural log of x must be greater than the natural log of 2 to the power of 2m. Then we can use our log rules to say that the natural log of x must be greater than 2m times the natural log of 2, because when we have a power in a log, we can bring it down as a coefficient. Now, how are we going to get rid of this 2 and this natural log of 2 so that we just have the m like we want? Well, thankfully, we can do that using the fact that the natural log of 2 is greater than or equal to a half, which we proved earlier using the mean value theorem. We know that 2m ln of 2 must be greater than or equal to 2m times a half because the natural log of 2 is greater than or equal to a half. Now, of course, the 2 and the half, well, that's just 1, and this is equal to big M. And we're done. We've shown you can take any number, any positive number, big M, and as long as we take x to be greater than 2 to the power of 2M, the natural log of x will be greater than big M. Hence, as x goes to infinity, the limit of natural log of x is also infinity. The natural log just gets bigger and bigger, even though it does so very slowly. Hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Scaling